6 low pan IPv6 over low power wireless personal area networks is a standard aimed to include all devices, even the simplest, in its scope. 6 low pan uses IPv6 Internet Protocol version 6, which replaces its predecessor IPv4. The significance of IPv6 is the vastly increased addressing capacity available, which means that many more devices can now be directly addressed on the Internet. 6 low pan might be thought of as a condensed form of IPv6. Because IPv6 has to cater for a genuinely global subscriber base, this is inevitably reflected in the size of the IPv6 addressing headers and associated messages. IPv6 requires that a frame length of 1280 bytes should be supported, which is too large for constrained devices and low bandwidth networks to handle without adaptation. So what is meant by the term low pan? The generic term low pan characterizes a wireless network of devices which may have short range, low cost, low data rate, low power or low memory. Low pans conform to an existing standard, IEEE, that is the Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers, standard 802.15.4. Salient characteristics of 802.15.4 networks include the following. Communication in 2.4 GHz, 915 MHz and 868 MHz wireless frequency bands. A packet size of 127 bytes, leaving just 81 bytes for data after link and security overheads are removed. Low pan networks support mesh and star topologies and cater for ad hoc positioning and the adding and removal of devices from the network. Also characteristic is the support for unreliable connections including forms of device sleep mode, a form of energy conservation, and support for low bandwidth networks. So how is 6 low pan structured in such a way as to achieve economical data transmission? This section makes reference to the IETF, Internet Engineering Task Force, standard RFC 4944. In order to adapt to the low pan environment, 6 low pan uses the following. It carries information for mesh addressing and routing requirements and network discovery. It uses compression of the IPv6 address and elision of IPv6 fields whose values do not change. It uses fragmentation and reassembly of IPv6 datagrams, which will be too large to fit into single low pan data units. It carries information conveyed in headers, which are structured in a different way from standard IPv6. The following section outlines how these headers are codified. 6 low pan defines an encapsulation header stack. This means that headers are added as needed in a predefined order. A basic header is available to encapsulate an uncompressed IPv6 datagram. In the simplest scenario, the byte length dispatch field value 01000001 denotes an uncompressed IPv6 datagram. 6 low pan provides for compression of the datagram. The use of compression is declared by a separate header. HC1 refers to a method to compress the IPv6 header. In this case, the dispatch byte is 01000010.
which indicates compression. Another header might be added to define mesh network parameters. Note that, as mentioned above, more than one header may be applied in the prescribed order. Mesh parameters include link level addresses, the number of hops left, and the address format. The solution to cater with larger data units received from the IPv6 network is to provide for fragmentation and reassembly, hence the fragmentation header. The fragmentation header includes size, tag and offset. The total size is transmitted with every fragment so that the receiver can set aside buffer space whichever fragment arrives first. The tag uniquely identifies the fragmented message. A further message type, the broadcast, is identified by another pattern in the datagram type byte, as shown. The first bits identify what type of header is to follow. Other bits in the first byte might identify other parameters such as datagram size, in the case of the fragmentation header, or hops left, in the case of a mesh header. Relevant headers are stacked in order. For example, the order for a compressed, fragmented datagram on a mesh network architecture would be as shown. The type in each case, is a 2-bit field used to indicate the type of header which will follow. The following methods are used to adapt standard IPv6 addressing fields. Firstly, the use of link local addresses. Secondly, the identification of a network prefix which will apply to all nodes on a mesh, for example. Thirdly, it may use a form of auto-configuration which is based on the unique underlying 802.15.4 address. It may also omit unused headers and merge other headers together, a process known as elision, for the headers at link, adaptation and IP layers. A new 6LOPAN host may configure its own address derived from its 802.15.4 address. It then tests the network to make sure there is no duplicate. If there is no duplicate, it has successfully auto-configured. It can then send a router solicitation message, the reply to which advises the network prefix. Note that which fields are included, elided or omitted, are conveyed in the compression header. The next section looks at compression in more detail. Firstly, the HC1 dispatch byte identifies the type of header that follows. Within the header, two bits are used to convey the source address. These tell the receiver if a link local address is used and if the interface has its ID derived from the underlying 802.15.4 address. In other words, these two bits tell the receiver what type of compression of the address field has been used. The same applies to two bits which are used to identify the type of compression for the destination address. The next bit illustrates how the compression header can indicate if part of the IPv6 header has been omitted. In this case, we're referring to the traffic class and flow label fields. Using this bit, 6LOPAN can indicate that it has missed out certain fields which, whilst they might serve a useful purpose for internet traffic, can be omitted for the purposes of the local network. There then follows a 2-bit field which indicates what type of protocol is being carried in the 6LOPAN message. The protocol encapsulated by 6LOPAN might be UDP or TCP 
or ICMP, all fundamental internet protocols. A bit is then included which indicates whether there will be a further round of compression. If so, a further 8 bits define HC2, header compression 2, which uses additional methods to compress the content. 6 Lopan allows for multiple compression strategies, which can be mixed and matched depending on the requirements of the original datagram. Where sufficient information can be gathered from lower levels in the protocol stack, fields can be elided, resulting in a smaller message. In each case, the compression strategies being employed are flagged up in the compression headers. Six Lopan is one of the technologies proposed for the Intelligent Transport Systems ITS. ITS may, for example, provide for a means for intelligent vehicles to avoid collisions, an aid for navigation, determining the quickest and clearest route, a means of updating availability of local resources, such as parking spaces and for the enforcement of road rules and tracking of vehicles. Where an existing mains powered network may already link road traffic furniture, 6 Lopan can connect an additional dense network of sensors to this backbone, providing multiple vantage points and redundancy at relatively low cost. For more information, for more information on Six Lopan, refer to IETF RFC four nine one nine, RFC four nine four four, RFC six two eight two, RFC six five six eight, RFC six six zero six, and RFC six seven seven five. Six low pan.